Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress, or welcome to Dwarf Fortress if you skip the, uh, the well, episode zero. So, uh, and to be honest, I can't really blame you. There's not a lot of gameplay on that one, and if you're not interested in playing Dwarf Fortress and just interesting, interested in watching it being played, that one's not all, all that interesting. Now, I want to uh, put this right off the top before I go any further, because I think I forgot to mention this in the last episode. I will not be going until this fortress dies necessarily. What I'm going to do is get this fortress to a point where it is stable so that, you know, it's at a point where you can really do whatever else you want with it. And so long as you continue expansion in a way that will support your population, you'll be fine. So just so we're, we're clear there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build the entrance to our fort because without that we have nothing. And this area already presents a little bit of a disadvantage in that regard. That being, we don't really have a really good cliff face to build into. Now, we do have this area right in here that we could build into. There are a couple advantages and disadvantages advantages to this. And sorry, I don't know why the edges of the screen do that. A quick press of the escape button fixes it. I'm going to have to do that from time to time. Haven't been able to figure that one out. Anyways, so the advantages of this spot... One, it's not a very tall mountain. Really, it's little more than just a, a hill. Uh, there aren't any more levels to this, so it's fairly easy to build a defense around this area. Uh, again, it seems to be one any time I change that level. Um, so it's pretty easy to defend. It's fairly small, so walling it off wouldn't be, wouldn't be too hard. However, it is also right next to the edge of the map, which, again, if that's what you want to build, that can work, but it's not necessarily ideal. So, rather than building into here, I think we might do a, um, basically just a surface base. And essentially all that is, is you build stairway, a stairway into the ground, which can work just fine as well. The advantage to this is we are closer to the, we can build it closer to the brook, which means easier access to fresh water. Uh, this is probably not an area where things are going to freeze, so I don't think we'll have to worry about any, uh, immediate, uh, building of reservoirs or anything like that so that we can survive the winter. Which is, again, which is one of the reasons why you want to pick a warm area to start with. We also have a couple pools of fresh water. I'm assuming fresh water. Well, it's stagnant water, but it's, like, not salt water, I guess, is what I meant to say. Uh, your dwarves definitely want to drink from this, because if it's, this isn't sitting water, so it won't go stagnant. So, I th as I said, I think we are going to do a... Uh, rather than building into a hill, we're going to kind of do a stairway into the ground which is kind of the second easiest way to do this. So, let's get started with that. So the first thing we want to do, if we look on the side here, uh, you see a bunch of hotkeys that we can use. What we want are the designations, which is D. Now we want to mine, which is D again. So D and D will set it to mine. Now one thing I am going to be using a lot in this is the mouse query, which, is, which we turn on with M, which basically allows you to play Dwarf Fortress with your mouse. Now, this isn't possible in Vanilla Dwarf Fortress. We have a program that kind of runs alongside Dwarf Fortress called DF Hack. That's what this window is right here. And it allows a bunch of different things uh, to be done, which we will be covering some of them, but nowhere near all of them or even a lot of them um, as we go through this tutorial. I'm going to be covering the ones that I think are really important for a new player to, to learn about. And then as you go through, you can experiment and play with the ones that I, I don't talk about. So we're going to build a stairwell, and we're going to put it right over here. We want it to be a 3x3. Three three. Ah, see, here's what I've done wrong. I've selected mine rather than the one I actually wanted, which was a downward stairway, which is J. You can also click on these, I think. Maybe you can't do that with the... Yeah, if you don't have the mouse query turned on, which is the M key by default, you can click on the one you want, whoops, rather than pressing the hotkey. I I'm I'm usually just stick to the hotkeys because I find them a little bit easier. Okay, so as I was saying, downward stair right here. We're going to make it a 3x3. Three three. And the reason we're doing a 3x3 three three is because two dwarves cannot easily occupy the same space, uh, which basically means if you have a one-wide uh, corridor or stairway, and two dwarves are trying to go in opposite directions in that corridor or stairway, it means they have to climb over each other, and that's a lot slower than if they could just walk past each other. 
so it's nice to give them a nice big stairway to start with. Now, underground, we want a uh, upward stairway, which, if I can find, is I. Now, the easiest way to do this oops, is, di, is to basically just highlight, or put your cursor, which is the yellow square that's moving around, over one corner, go down a level, and then just bring it out the number that you want. Now, oh, that's an up-down stairway. I wanted an up stairway, which is you. Sorry if you can hear that craziness going on in the background. I am uh, looking after the puppy today, and he's being a little bit retarded. All right, so we have the, uh, the up stairways here. Now, some people choose to design their fortress where it's basically just, for you go from the entrance right into the fort. That is not the most defensible, though it does make certain aspects of the fort quicker, such as trading. However, I prefer to have a much more defensible entrance. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up basically a long hallway that dwarves or invading armies or whatever have to go through if they want to invade our fortress. And basically, what we want to do, eventually anyway, this is not what we're going to do to start off with, but it's good to plan stuff like this out ahead of time. Uh, you can designate areas to dig, and so long as you don't uh, dig them out, or as long as you don't connect those designated areas to a place the dwarves can access, they won't dig it out. Now, what I'm doing here is building what is essentially going to become a long hallway that invaders will have to walk through if they wish to invade our fort. Now, this is something I tend not to bother with in most of my games nowadays because it's one of those things that can make the game really easy on you. I'm, I'm showing it here just because, again, it's one of those things that can make the game really easy on you. And until you have you know, a grasp of the game game's mechanics, making it easier on yourself is probably a good idea. So essentially all you want is these three by three, or these uh, three wide hallways with one space of stone that will be left in between them. And what you can do with these is as the enemies try to come into your fort, you can pop up doorways which force them to go along these paths. Then you fill these paths with traps and potentially you set up ballista on this side. It'll still be a little bit harder here because of the water, which we might actually think about moving this if uh, we do, but... I'm not going to worry about, about that too much because, again, even without the ballista, this is a fairly solid defense. You won't really need too much more than this. So anyway, so they're going to have to come through there, walk through the traps, and it gives your soldiers plenty of time to, you know, form up and repel whatever survives the hallway of traps. Now, speaking of soldiers, what we want to do is we want to build a little room that kind of comes off to the side here. Actually, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Say a 9 by 9 room, which is way larger than you actually need, but why not go extravagant, right? And the reason it, we're building it at a 90 degree angle to this hallway, and the reason is you don't want your soldiers to see the enemy before you're ready. Now, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit here, um, but this is kind of, this is one of the things you need to think about when you're first designing your, your base, is because your dwarves are kind of stupid in that they will gladly rush into a force that they have no chance of winning against you know and get themselves killed rather than waiting for reinforcements that would allow them to easily win so what you want to do is you want to make sure you have an area where when you need to defend your fort you can gather your soldiers without them rushing to their deaths and that's what this little area right over here is going to be for and then after that we just need a simple uh, down stairway again, which is J. And we build out another 3x3 three three stairway. So that's kind of the beginnings of our fortress defense. Again, I'm not connecting these to this, because the dwarves are going to be able to mine all this out. I don't want them to mine this out yet, because we don't need this yet. And it would be a waste of time that we need to be spending on other things. Let me see, what else? Oh yes, what else do we need? We need a couple of stockpiles set up. Now stockpiles are basically where your dwarves store goods. 
the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up a quick um, uh, refuse stockpile so that we can get rid of any dead bodies that happen to, to come up to come up um, as well as have a place to just throw general garbage. So what we want to do is we want the stockpiles, which is P, and we want refuse, which is R. Now what you can do is you can select one of these as a base and then you can press T to customize what goes in it. Uh, or at least I thought you could. Refuse. And then... Hmm. All right, I guess that may have changed or I'm misremembering things. Either way, we want refuse turned on. And the reason why I'm not using a default uh, refuse stockpile is because there are certain things that the game considers refuse that are actually useful to us. And those are skulls. So we want to disable these or uh, forbid them. So you press F. So we want to forbid skulls, bones, shells, teeth, horns and hooves, hair and wool. What we want to throw into the garbage are body parts, corpses, and uh, all these different item types that have you know potentially gone bad. We also want corpses for right now. Uh, eventually, you're going to want to turn that off, but just in case something happens and we lose a dwarf or we get uh, attacked and we have to kill something, we want a place to put it. So right now, the garbage pile will do. So you, you get that set up and you want to pick an area that's kind of close to your entrance. And the reason is, is you don't want your dwarves to have to travel very far to get rid of it. So we'll just set this area as our refuse stockpile. Fairly large, but it will make sure that we have one available for for a while. Now, before we unpause the game, because we haven't unpaused the game yet, we need to fire up our dwarf therapist and make sure that people are assigned jobs that we need them to do at the moment. Now, first off, we need people assigned to mining. We already have two assigned to mining, which is good. We need something for our other people to do. And we don't want our miners to be hauling things. That's a waste of their time. We want them to be mining, especially in the early days. So what we want to do is you go over to these options on here on the far right hand side and you want to turn all of these off. And what this does is basically it tells you, it tells your, the game that you want these two dwarves to mine, to have the mining profession and not haul anything. Now, when you make these changes, you have to make sure you click the commit button because if you don't, then the changes won't actually be pushed into the game. All of this is editable, editable within the game, but trust me, the interface is ugly. This is far, far better to use. So just stick with this. It will make your life so much easier. Okay, so we have done that. Now, we do want to set up some things for our other people to do while they're waiting for things to be dug out. Uh, so for instance, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get somebody cutting down trees. So we're going to set Errol, Dosh, whatever, this guy to be our logger. And we're gonna go over here and designate some trees to cut down. And again, you do it uh, the same way that we designated areas to be dug out. You press D, oops. First you have to get back to this screen. Then you press D and you press T for chop down trees. And then you select some trees and he'll go ahead and chop these down. We'll just select a bunch for now. So he'll cut those down. Now the problem is right now, he doesn't have an area to store them. Eventually, we're going to have an indoor stockpile for these things, but until we do, let's just get an outdoor stockpile. Oops, how about you press the right button there, zero. We get an outdoor stockpile for wood, and this one we can just use the, the base uh, stockpile for. It doesn't have to be very big. As I said, this is going to be a temporary stockpile, so we're just going to go do a 5x5. Five five. So, and what else do we have? We have a few dwarves that still don't have anything to do. Now, hauling is not a bad job for them, but we also have one who's set to farming. That'll become important here very soon. Uh, if you're playing with the harder farming, you want to get your farming set up very quickly. In the meantime, though, I think we will leave them all as, oh, as, uh, as just haulers for now until we have more jobs for them to do. The other th thing we need to do before we unpause, animals need to eat. And if you, at least some of them do, some of them don't. But the animals that need to eat are our goats and the beasts of burden that we use to pull the, the wagon here. You get two free beasts of burden whenever you start a new fortress. If you're lucky, 
you'll get two, you'll get a mating pair of animals. It doesn't look like we've done that here, though. If I go over to Dwarf Fortress and take a look at my animals, we have, yeah, two female mountain tuskoths. Those were the two free animals we got. So not a mating pair. Uh, they could be a good source of leather or food, but for right now, we'll just hang on to them and see if we can't maybe pick up a male tusk ox somewhere. But what we need to do is we press is set up an area for these guys to be penned and therefore have grass to eat. So what we do is we press I. After we get out of the stockpile screen, we press I to go into zone mode. We select an area of grass for them to eat in. And it doesn't have to be massively big, but, uh, you know, having a, a fairly large area can't won't hurt them either. Uh, if you're playing Vanilla Dwarf Fortress, then this area has to be a lot bigger because animals eat grass much faster. So what we want to do after we designate this area, see it's flashing to show that we have it selected. Press N to designate it as a pen slash pasture. Then we want to press Shift N to designate who should go into it. And again, DF Hack is helping us here because it allows us to filter this list. So I want to remove all non-grazing creatures who are not currently pastured. Right now, that's not going to change the list any, but it's a nice one to have. And that will show these are the Boost Belly Goats and the Tusk Ox, are the animals that we need to pasture. So what we do is we just go down the list by pressing Enter to select the, uh, to select the animal and plus and minus to move the cursor up and down the list. And we just go through and we add them all to this, to this list. Okay, now that we've done all that, we can officially unpause. So to do that, we just press the space bar. As you see, the doors will start taking off. They'll start digging into the ground. Now this is just dirt, so it's fairly easy for them to dig into. And they will dig through that rather quickly. And we'll just let them get this first area all dug out before we go ahead and start designating more areas for them to dig. In the meantime, you can see that we have our, where's our lumberjack? Yeah, okay, well, here's a, another good value of Dwarf Fortress. So we'll pause the game. We come back into Dwarf Fortress, we go to Labors. Now click Read Dwarves. This will give you, show you what all your dwarves are doing. Now see here, I made a mistake and I forgot to tell the, uh, the game that we wanted somebody, or I forgot to commit my changes after we told the game that we wanted this person to be a lumberjack. So we're going to click on him again, click commit, unpause the game, and now we should have this dwarf going and mining this tree, or mining, uh, cutting down this tree. To a dwarf, all things are mining. Okay, now, as you probably just saw, we got a message here about striking malach malachite bearing rock. Malachite is a type of metal which will come in handy a little later. Uh, it will, it's primarily, it's uh, copper, I believe, uh, which is not as useful as hematite, which is iron, but copper is a good learning material for your smiths so that they can build up their skills. What do we have? What are these walls built out of? We have peat. Peat is good because we can grow crops in peat. Uh, so that's going to be something that we set up fairly soon as our farms. However, the first thing we want to set up is our stockpiles. And to do that, we need to, basically the way I like to set this up, and again, this is all things that you can change as you get uh, better at the game, or even the first time you play and you maybe don't like the way I do things, which would not be the first time. This is just my suggestions to give you a, a start. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, I like to build my fortress out in a, I generally mix it up, but my default pattern is to go is to create these 20 long hallways. 20, uh, you know what, actually I might make those a little bigger since we have the room. Uh, why don't we make them 30 long hallways with stairs on either side. And I want downward stairs for these, for these top ones. To move the cursor quickly, you can uh, press shift. That'll, as you're moving the cursor and that'll cause it to jump. Oops, and also turn on your sticky keys. No. I will have to go back and change that later. Usually I just use the mouse and right click though. Uh, right clicking will basically do the same thing, but I find it a little easier to use. Uh, so we basically want to designate these 30 long hallways. If you see in the bottom right hand corner, it tells me how big my selection is. So we want to go, uh, I guess I can't go that high. Oh yeah, yeah I can. That was just me being dumb. All right, we want to go three by 30. 
and then downward stairs at the top. Oops. Now see what I've done here is I've made my designation slightly too big. Easy to fix. Press X and then just designate out an area where you want to remove designations. Pretty good. Now this seems a little long to me, or a little short. That's 30 by 30. Okay. Must be just be my eyes playing tricks on me. So again, we do these 30 long hallways, which is here and here. And then our stairways. Again, this is all planning out the fortress. You don't have to... It's a good idea to plan out your fortress, at least to some degree, uh, even if you don't intend to dig it all out right away. Because I don't intend to dig out these hallways right away, uh, but it's still good that you plan kind of where things go. At least I think so. All right, so that's kind of going to be the basic layout of our fortress. What this does is it basically creates five main pathways through the levels, because I prefer very tall fortresses as opposed to wide ones. Uh, and basically that means I prefer fortresses with many levels rather than having a few levels that are excessively big. Now I do like to have one level right at the top that's designated completely to storage space. I like having this at the top because it gets my finished goods closer to the trade depot, which we'll be covering, covering probably in a later episode, but it's important to, to have an area close to the trade depot so your dwarves can quickly move goods into it when it comes time to trade. Uh, it also gives me a good area uh, to bring in goods from outside, and you know I like to have it deep enough in my fortress that it's well guarded, but not uh, so deep that it's a, a pain to get to. So it's usually the first real floor of my fortress. This floor here, again, stupid flashing borders, this floor here is strictly defensive and probably farming, and that's just because you need farming in certain types of soil. And then, of course, we have the surface, which is a dangerous place, which we don't want to be. So, uh, enough rambling. Let's start designating our storage areas. Now, storage is one of those things that if you talk to a thousand Dwarf Fortress players, you'll get a thousand different opinions on how it should be done. There are people who like various styles and uh, various methodologies to storage, and I mean, there are ways that are better than others, but really it uh, comes down to a lot of personal preference. What I like to do is I like to have um, a few large rooms for the uh, storage spaces that need larger areas, like furniture, for instance, uh, coupled with a bunch of smaller rooms for storage areas that don't need a lot of space for things like, um, I don't know, ammunition, for instance, because ammunition stacks up pretty well. Um, this, allow, this is basically more for organization of my own head. It allows me to see at a quick glance how many of each type of item we have without having to pick through a massive mess. You can do one massive storage area and store everything there, or you can partition it out however you please. The storage system in this is actually pretty, pretty robust. But what we're going to start with is a uh, 15 by 15 room with two entrances. Actually, we're going to do it like this instead. We're going to do two entrances per side. And again, why am I not using my mouse for this? And this will be our storage room, our general storage room for now, but we will uh, kind of partition it out later. Now what I'm going to do is set these areas as, you know, not uh, designated, so that blocks the dwarves off from here. Because again, this is all just for planning, essentially. Okay, so with that done, let's let the dwarves carry on with their digging. Because this is not only going to be our storage room for the time being, it's kind of going to be our first shelter from the deadly, deadly surface. Now, while they're doing that, there's another trick I want to set up, and that is to set up a pasture over here. Again, these damn flashing borders. I really do need to see if I can fix those, but I've already tried, and it's uh, nothing I can I have tried so far seems to work. Anyway, we want to create a one tile zone that is a pasture, and we want to uh, shift N to set the pasture animals. Now, what we want is we want um, to remove all the animals that are currently pastured, just so I can see a smaller list. We want to remove all the female animals, and we want to add our male mastiff. To this pen. Now the reason why we want to make sure it's the male mastiff is because when the female mastiff has puppies, 
the puppies will occupy the same space because they will automatically be assigned to the same pen. And because the pen is only one tile big, they'll be all stuck in there. The problem with that is if too many animals are forced to share the same space, they will begin to fight and kill each other. So you really don't want the puppies to be occupying the same space. By specifying that it's the male that stays here, that will never become an issue. And now, eventually, somebody, yep, if you see him here, he's got a hold of the Mastiff and he's dragging him along. And he's going to leave him on that square. And basically, what this does is if anything tries to sneak into our fort, or just blatantly enter our fort, the first thing it has to go by is a Mastiff. And as I believe I mentioned in Episode 0, Mastiffs are freaking brutal. They will be able to defend your fort against any... I shouldn't say any. Most of the initial threats you may face as well as a lot of the later threats. They aren't a one-man security force that will last you your entire Dwarf Fortress career, but they are an excellent early defense. Okay, so things are chugging along quite nicely here. And this is turning out rather well. Didn't I grab three pickaxes? I can't remember. Here's how we find out. If we press, I believe, this is picking my memory a little bit, N, no, not N, uh, Z, that's what I wanted. And we go over to stocks, we can see a list of everything we have. Now, here's an interesting thing. You see how there's a question mark next to all these numbers? That means that they're guessing at how much we have, because we don't have a bookkeeper. You know, they say we're, we have about 20 meat, maybe? Um, and those numbers, you know, here, 20 meat's probably a pretty accurate guess. But those numbers very, very quickly spiral out of control. Um, and that's why one of the first noble positions you'll fill, and we'll talk about nobles in another video, but one of the first noble positions you will fill is your bookkeeper. Now, I'm in here specifically because I want to know about uh, tools. Is it tools I want? Um, we scroll through the list here. Not seeing what I'm after. Am I blind? Entirely possible. Ah, here we go. They're actually under weapons. Sorry. I wanted to know how many picks we have, and we have three. So I can actually assign somebody else to digging. So if we go over here, who are our best miners? Well, we have this Earl guy. He could be a miner, but he's already our lumberjack. Any job that requires a tool to do, lumberjacking, uh, mining, uh, and there's another one. Mine, it's escaping me at the moment, but the, the two that are the most important are your mining and your logging cannot be held by the same dwarf. If you see here, if I try to switch this guy over to mining, it's going to automatically deselect logging. And we want to leave him on, on logging because we want to specialize this dwarf. What we are going to do is we are going to stick this guy onto mining, and we're going to leave all his hauling on as well because mining is going to be a secondary thing for him. We only want him to mine if he's got nothing else to do. So we're going to commit that. Uh, and if we go back to Dwarf Fortress here, we should have a third miner down here helping out. He's not going to be as good as these two, because he's just not as good at it, uh, which means he's slower. But at the very least, we'll now have three bodies working on it as opposed to uh, two, which will make things happen quite a bit quicker. Now, this is a fairly large area to mine out all in one go. Uh, that I will freely admit. But it does give us a nice big area to start with and to start expanding underground. Because the problem is you don't want to stay on the surface. There are a lot of dangerous animals up here that could potentially kill us. Now, we don't want them to kill our animals either, but given the choice, I'd much rather they kill animals who can be fairly cheaply bought later on down the, ro down the road than to kill a dwarf, which might have skills that we need to survive. Why do we have a moving turkey leg? It's, what? Yeah, what's this? It's a lungfish. That's interesting. Okay, so what do we have here? We have some creatures moving around. We have weasels. All right, these guys aren't going to be too much of a pain for us, so we don't really need to worry about them. This is part of the reason why we chose the area that we did, is because the animals that are likely to show up are likely to be non-hostile, or at the very least, not very scary if they are. For instance, weasels. If we picked a harder area, those could have been giant mutant wombat men that wield battle axes. I don't know, I'm making things up. But the game can throw stuff like that at you. 
So it's the t uh, and you see that type of stuff the higher the savagery of the area, and you see harder monsters the higher the evilness of an area is. This is not a, this is a neutral I believe I can't remember exactly um, area with a low savagery. So we're not going to see too too many you know um, hurtful things. Now what are these? They're coyotes. These guys are a little bit more dangerous, but if they wanted to go, they're not generally going to go after a dwarf. They're going to generally go after livestock. Uh, especially small livestock like our uh, cavern keats here. However, to do that, they would have to go near not only our mastiff, but also our tusk oxes, which are going to make short work of them pretty handily. So how's this going down here? Oh, cool. They have it all built out. So what we are going to do as kind of the last point of this video is set up a general purpose stockpile. And this is basically going to be to hold everything except for a few key components. So if we go into custom stockpile and we press T to go into the custom stockpile settings, we're just going to disable everything and start from the top. So what do we have in, in animals? Well, this is basically all your caged animals. Not a horrible thing to turn on, not, nece not necessary per se, but it doesn't hurt to turn it on. We have food. We are going to enable all of this here. We have furniture. We want all of that. No corpses. We do want some refuse, so enable it, but forbid uh, item types. Corpses, actually, sorry, not item types. What am I thinking here? Re-enable that. Permit. There we go. Uh, leave that on. Because it's basically kind of, I want skulls, but only of, I don't know. Um, that doesn't really apply here. But basically, this is so you can specify certain items. But it doesn't hurt to leave it on or off. So we're going to leave it on. Uh, we don't want corpses. We don't want body parts. So forbid that. We do want skulls, we do want bones, we do want shells, we do want teeth, hair, horns, and hooves. So we leave all that on. We do not want stone in this uh, stockpile, and there's a very good reason for this. As you dig out your fortress, you're going to get a lot of stone. And you don't want to clog up your stockpile by putting all the stone in there. We'll have a different storage method for stone, which I will cover uh, probably next episode. We want ammo. We want coins. This isn't going to be... That's interesting. I wonder if that's a bug or if that's just kind of a side effect of the raw editing. Either way, coins. We're not going to get into coins too much, but they are there. So we want bars and blocks. Um, actually, no, sorry. No, we don't. My mistake. We want gems. We want finished goods, leather, cloth, no wood, weapons and traps, and armor. And this is basically going to create a stockpile that holds all of our initial starting equipment as well as anything that we might get in the early days that we want to store. And we're going to highlight all this and select that as an area. The other thing we're going to do is create a zone covering the exact same area. And we are going to set this as a meeting hall, which is M. And basically what that does is it tells the dwarves that, okay, even though we don't have a dining room yet, which is where dwarves will normally congregate, we do have a meeting hall, which is where I want you to go when you don't have anything else to do. So if a dwarf isn't doing another job, they will go, they will stay inside the fortress, as will any animals. And as you can see, we should have some dwarves grabbing animals and items from our wagon here, which is this kind of U-shape of blue wood, and dragging them down into our stockpiles, as you can see here. And you can also see our female mastiff has come down here as well. Animals that don't have a pen to stay in uh, will move and don't have another job to do, uh, like, say, for instance, this guy up here, will move into the meeting hall as well. And when you get one, eventually into your dining room. So as you can see, they're happily moving items into there. And that seems like a pretty good place to end our first real episode of second tutorial episode of Masterwork Dwarf Fortress. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have anything in particular that you would like me to cover in further detail, by all means, post in the comment comments letting me know. Um, I'm trying my best to kind of explain this to you guys as best as I can, and I realize I might not be doing the world's greatest job. Um, so if you guys need want me to cover anything more closely, if you guys feel I skimmed over something I shouldn't have, if you guys are, saw something and are just interested in it and maybe want to make sure that I cover it, let me know. 
because I, I already know how to play Dwarf Fortress. I'm making this tutorial for you guys because I want you guys to be able to play this amazing game. I have literally lost hours of my time to this game, so it's, it's quite fun to play. Uh, either way, thank you guys very much for watching. Please leave any feedback below in the form of a like, dislike, or comment, as well as the aforementioned what things you would like to see in the series. And so long.